Welcome back, and I've got another really fun experiment for you today, and a rather unusual one. What we're going to try and do is determine the temperature of a Bunsen flame. So this is a really lovely experiment and one I've not done for many years, mainly because of the health and safety issues of doing this with a class. Now, you might say, well, if you want to measure the temperature of a Bunsen flame, why don't you get a regular glass thermometer? But it would be really dangerous to put a normal glass thermometer from the lab in a Bunsen flame because it only reads up to about 100 degrees centigrade or thereabouts. But I've got a really clever method that uses very simple apparatus. And the main things you need to know about to work this out is the specific heat capacity of water and steel. So let me explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 150 centimetres cubed of water and I'll measure it with a measuring cylinder. And it's going to start off at room temperature. I'll put it in this beaker so you can see what's going on. We'd normally use a calorimetry can, but it's more fun if you can see what happens later on in the experiment. Then I'm going to take this steel ball. It's from another piece of apparatus. It sort of looks brassy, but I think it's only brass coated. So it's a steel ball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up in a Bunsen flame and I'm going to heat it and heat it and heat it. And if I leave it in the Bunsen flame for long enough, it's going to be at the same temperature as the Bunsen flame. OK, now for the clever bit. If I take this really, really hot ball that's at the temperature of the Bunsen flame and put it into the water and leave it for a few moments, it'll warm the water up from room temperature to a higher temperature. If we know what the specific heat capacity is of water, then we know how many joules we fed into the water to heat it up caused by the ball. Now for the final bit. Imagine if I took a known mass, this ball, at room temperature and fed those joules back in. If I know its specific heat capacity, then I know what temperature it will rise to. And that temperature will be the temperature of the Bunsen flame. So a couple of measurements before we get going. I've got 150 centimetres cubed of water and knowing the density of water as one gram per centimetre cubed, I know that's 150 grams of water. So 0 0.150 kilograms. We'll now just uh, find the mass of the steel ball. I'll try not to do the chain as well. And that comes out at 73 grams. So the amount of steel we've got here is 0 0.0 seven three kilograms of steel so let's get started warming this up okay so we're ready to go i've measured the temperature of the water which is room temperature 20 degrees c and the steel ball has been in the room as well um, all day so that's also at 20 degrees c so we'll turn on the bunsen and start heating the steel ball and we will have to leave it for a while to get up to the temperature of the Bunsen burner. So the steel ball has been heating for quite some time now and you can see it's in the hottest part of the Bunsen flame. What we're going to do in a minute is remove the Bunsen quickly and then drop the hot ball, which will be at Bunsen burner temperature, straight into our 150 centimetres cubed of water. OK, so I think that's pretty hot now. So I'm going to turn off the Bunsen. There we go. Move the Bunsen. And hopefully the ball won't cool down too much. Put the water underneath. And now for the fun bit, put the ball into the water.
So there we go, we've got a thermometer in the water now and the water will be at the same temperature as the steel ball and the water is at about 47 degrees centigrade. So we've got all the data that we need now, let's see if we can work out how hot that Bunsen burner flame was. So now we've got all our data, we just need to do a little bit of maths to determine what the temperature was of our Bunsen flame. OK, so let's now try and work out the temperature of our Bunsen flame. We'll remind ourselves of the data that we had. So the water that we worked with uh, had a mass of 0.15 kilograms. Uh, the ball that we used had a mass of 0.073 kilograms. And being careful here always to work in kilograms. And then the water, okay, at the start was room temperature, 20 degrees C. And after we dropped the ball bearing into it, uh, the water at the end was 47 degrees C. So a rise of 27 degrees centigrade. So let's now see if we can use this to work out the temperature of our Bunsen flame. So the thing to remember is that the ball started off being, it was heated, started off being at the temperature of the Bunsen flame and we cooled it, we took energy out of it and fed it into the water and we cooled the ball down to 47 degrees centigrade and raised the water temperature to that value so we raised the water by 27 degrees c so um the way to work this out is to work out how much energy the ball lost in warming up the water so we're going to use the specific heat capacity equation so q the amount of energy fed in is equal to m the mass of the water c the specific heat capacity of the water times by delta the change in temperature. I use theta here but we could use delta t. So using our numbers, q, the amount of energy taken from the ball and fed into the water, in other words to cool down the ball, was the mass of the water 0.15. should really put another o on there actually if I'm sorting, well there's probably two significant figures there and two there so that's probably okay. Times by the specific heat capacity of water which is 4,200 joules to, to raise one kilogram by one degree C, but we raised it by 27 degrees C. So the amount of energy taken from the little ball to cool it down from the temperature of the Bunsen flame to 47 degrees C was 17,010 joules of energy and I'll remind you here that that was into the water. So let's now use this to work out how hot the actual flame was. Right so here's the really clever bit and the bit that I struggled to get my head around when I was a student. What we need to do now is feed this energy back mathematically into the steel ball that is at 47 degrees C and see how much hotter it gets. In other words, what temperature does it get to if we feed that energy back in? That's the energy that we took out to cool it. So to do that, we need to know the specific heat capacity of the ball. So that was steel. At least I'm assuming it was steel. It looked like it was slightly brass coated, but I think it's steel. And that's 420 joules needed to raise one kilogram by one degree C. So we know that the formula for spe specific heat capacity is Q equals MC delta theta. Okay, uh, so the energy fed in is the mass of the steel times by the specific heat capacity of the steel times by the temperature change. Well, we know the energy that we're going to feed back in mathematically. We know the mass of the ball. We know its specific heat capacity. So how much would that rise the temperature by? So we rearrange this. So the change in temperature, it's quite important you remember that it's a change in temperature. Yeah. 
is equal to Q divided by MC. So if we put our numbers into this, yep, uh, the change in temperature will be equal to Q, uh, which is 17010 divided by the mass of the steel ball, yep, which is 0 0.073 kilograms times by the specific heat capacity of steel, which is 420 joules per kilogram degrees C. And that gives a change in temperature, how much feeding this amount of energy in would raise the steel ball by, of 555 degrees C. Now, finally, just remember that this is how much we'd raise it by. So the actual temperature, of the flame because the flame temperature we're arguing is the temperature that the ball was at when we took it out of the flame is 555 plus 47 degrees C so that equals 602 degrees C so there we go from our experiment there is the temperature that we've worked out of our Bunsen flame. So if you look up a data book value for the temperature of a roaring Bunsen flame, um, you'll find different values, but the actual value is approximately 1,500 degrees C. So uh, let's not worry about that. Um, as I always say about my experiments, um, I didn't have any intention of doing this incredibly precisely and also incredibly accurately. Um, all I wanted to do was to show you the process and particularly the lovely experiment of sticking that really hot ball into the water and seeing it boil. So if you ever get a question on this sort of thing um, or just want to explain why our answer is out by such a long way, just think about all the losses in this experiment. Um, you know, we, we had losses from the ball. I wasn't certain that I'd heated the ball. We used to heat it up until it was absolutely red hot and then you could really see what was going on. Uh, but the main thing is that you understand the process and that's the joy of doing this kind of experiment in the laboratory. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment and you now know how we would determine the temperature of a Bunsen flame in the laboratory. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.